Hey guys, welcome to Pelican Pits. Hey, today is all about two smoked pork tenderloins. We kept the temp low. We use the Lone Star grills. If you guys want to see how we do this, here we go. All right, to get started, let's start the Lone Star Grills Pellet Smoker. We're going to average about 200 to start this cook-off. We'll let that keep going. We got b, &B pellets in there. Uh, I'm going to rock those pretty often. Um, pretty affordable in my area. The local academy has them. Uh, we're just rocking the bottom grate today. We'll let the smoker do its thing, and we can season those tenderloins. These are not on sale, but we find them on sale quite often. I think it is one of the greatest gifts to barbecue, whether it be a weeknight meal, whether it be a fast meal. It's something that you could smoke, you can grill, you can reverse sear, you can forward sear, you can wrap, you can leave it unwrapped, and you can marinate. The point is, I think it's very versatile. My kids love it. I truly think a pork tenderloin is the best bang for the buck. That's my opinion. You can argue with me all you want to, but it just seems like everybody in the family always just snacks and picks and just... Nobody just goes against it. You know, it's not like, if hey, you, we don't like it, you know? If you could find something that everybody eats in the family, <laughs> that's pretty good. I agree. So when I went to uh, Utah, um, I met one of the people out there married to barbecue. And one of her, I obviously subscribed to her channel. One of her things came up the other day that was a pork loin, like baby back ribs. And it was juicy as can be. I mean, she did a really good job. So what I'm going to do is kind of mirror that idea. So one of these is gonna be traditional barbecue, and the other one is gonna be uh, butter, brown sugar, a little bit of honey. We're gonna wrap it in aluminum foil and let it rest, and then uh, open it up and let it tack up. So we're gonna treat one of these like a rack of ribs, the other one just like straight barbecue. I'm gonna do a little trimming on one of them. The other one's gonna be done the same exact way. You see your silver skin running down. So just take a knife, kind of work underneath that skin. If you have trouble uh, digging into your meat, just imagine your knife coming up on the meat, not down in the meat. So once you get underneath the meat, keep your knife up. And there we go. I like to leave as much fat on as possible. Obviously fat is flavor. I'm gonna get that other one knocked out. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, they're so versatile. They can take on so many flavors. I'm not even gonna use a barbecue seasoning. I'm just gonna go with my all purpose. Um, and uh, just let it go with the way it is. I just love the flavor. So we got that recipe on Pellets and Pits. You guys can make it at home. Just make sure you're working all those sides. All right, something like that. We're gonna let that sweat in while our pellet smoker's coming up to temp and throw these on. All right, we're just gonna probe them here with some thermometers. This, uh, these thermometers came with the, uh, the unit. When I'm doing a low and slow like this, I like to kind of put the meat together instead of stretching it out because it's a thin cut of meat, it's gonna cook pretty fast. But if you can get your meat fatter like this, it's gonna smoke a little bit longer. Roughly an hour and a half later, we're getting close to that 120 mark was what I wanted. Um, something that's pretty popular is put some butter down with ribs. So we're gonna do that. I'm just trying to look at how much butter goes down for one tenderloin, maybe one more pad. Somewhere like that. We get a little brown sugar there, so a few tablespoons of that. Got a little Mike's Hot Honey. A few tablespoons of that. You can see that pattern right there. All right, and right here for the other one, we just have some barbecue sauce. It's a brand new and we're trying out. It was a little thick for me, so we added some water to thin it out. So what we're gonna start doing is just saucing our pork. That gives us about 20 to 25 degrees to play with, maybe even 30. So I'll let that sauce tack up really nice and we can add layers of sauce. Ooh, look at that pretty grill mark. Oh yeah. That's how we do it. So I just set on the bottom, that butter melted a little bit. I'm gonna come back and just hit it with those same notes. Just a little bit of honey, a little brown sugar, and maybe just one to two pads of butter. All right, we're just gonna tightly wrap this up in foil.
put our thermometer back in and on the pit it goes until our desired doneness. Mm. All right, so the one in foil is coming up to temp. We only have about 10 more degrees to go. So what I'm gonna do is take the thermometer out. It didn't naturally do its thing. Ooh, that thing's hot. Ooh. <sighs> kind of boat it, so it kind of tacks up. So this is almost done. We got a little bit more time on that. I just sauced it again for the second time. Alrighty, last like 15 minutes, I bumped the temperature up to about 250. And then we just undid this one. This is the one that reminds you of like a rib. It's got that Mike's Hot Honey Butter Brown Sugar. Don't think for one second, that's not gonna be a sauce for us. Oh yeah. All right, let's slice into these bad boys. So this is the barbecue one. And I'm really anxious about this one. It just sounded good to me, so I'm gonna cut a little bit on the bias. Keep it at 200 really allowed a lot of time on the smoker, actually more time than what I figured. Um, on the barbecue one, since it was a bigger cut of pork tenderloin, I bumped the temp up about 50 degrees for the last 15 minutes just to help that barbecue sauce set. Now that's a nice pork ring right Ooh, there. That's a smoke ring. It's hard to tell because the light. Yeah, that's a nice ring right there. Look at that juice. Oh, he just dumped it in the juice. No, 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 no. Look at that. Jeez. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. I always know how good it is by what your face looks like immediately when you take a bite. And that one's good, I can tell. Let's see. Boy. It's like tender as can be. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They call it a tender one. Mmm. Mm. This is actually my first time ever smoking it the whole way. Mm -hmm. Typically, I smoke it and then sear it off, or I'll sear it off like a forward sear and then smoke it. I never actually smoked one the whole way. I'm telling you right now, that's money. Yeah. That is so dang good. I know. Hold it still. Hang on. Let's try to get it. Mm. Perfect for leftover sandwiches. You can do bomb me. Mm. See what we got here. Same thing. Nice smoke ring. Just juicy. Let's look at the juice. Just look at that. Watch this. <laughs> Tastes like that barbecue sauce. I mean, honestly, I prefer the next one. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's good too, though. It's yeah. different. As subtle and as mild as the pork is, the sauce didn't overdo the pork, and I think all the flavors come through. Once again, I mentioned on ribs, sometimes I like just a good salt, pepper, garlic. That's it. And that's what that Texas rub does. With this, it just changes the flavor profile completely because the barbecue sauce is so brash. But, I mean, smoking it all the way through, I personally think is the way to go. I mean... You can grill it, like I said, you can marinate these with lemon, rosemary, garlic, olive oil, stuff like that. Mediterranean style, you can do um, Italian style. I mean, you can do a lot of things with a pork tenderloin, but there you go. Pork tenderloin on the pellet grill, one of my favorites. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share with your friends. Peace. Mm. That's money. That is super good. That is money.